Floating point numbers are the numbers that have decimal points. So we could have x equal to 13.5. And if we echo out x, we get 13.5. You could also represent floating numbers in exponential form. So for example, we could turn this to 13.5 e3, and that will equal to 13,500. We could also do the negative numbers. So we could do e negative 3, and this will result in 0 0.0135. And the type of x is also float. Now we can check that by doing var dump and confirm that it's floating number. Even when we do with the positive and it doesn't actually contain decimals, it is still float. Also, as we discussed with integers, as of PHP 7.4, you could actually have underscores within your numbers for better readability. So you could have something like 13,000 and in here you could add underscore and this is perfectly fine. And if we refresh, we get float and we can remove the exponential from here and refresh and that's the works also just like integers the size of the floating numbers depend on the platform and you can check that by using the predefined constants and those constants are php float max and php float min i believe so let's check that out php float max and mean so you could use these let's echo out the maximum and we see that it's a pretty large number. The main thing to be aware of when working with floating numbers are their limited precisions. For example, if we took this expression right here, floor 0 0.1 plus 0 0.7 times 10, you would think that this would return 8, right? Because 0 0.1 plus 0 0.7, that's 0 0.8 times 10, that's Eight, and then floor just should round it down to eight and just return eight if we refresh we get seven and the reason for that is because 0 0.1 or the 0 0.7 don't exactly have an exact representation uh, as the floating point numbers in base 2 which is binary and binary is used internally to store the floating numbers and therefore when converting this into binary internally it loses some of the precision and in this case, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.7 times 10 actually equals to this number right here. And as you know, floor basically just rounds all the numbers down. And in this case, when applying floor to this number, it just removes this entire uh, decimals here and we are left with seven. And that's why it prints seven here. Now I know that I introduced a lot of concepts here, such as multiplication, addition, the method floor, and so on. Just don't worry about this too much right now. We're going to go over the operators in a separate video. I just want to let you know what to be aware of when working with floats. So as you know, floor just rounds everything down. And the opposite of that is called ceiling or seal, which basically rounds everything up. And if we were to refresh this page, we get eight, which is expected. Now let's do another example with ceiling where it would result in unexpected value. So let's change this to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 times 10. And you would think that this would return three because 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is 0 0.3 times 10, that's three. And then ceiling should just result in three. But in reality, this results in four. And that's because 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 actually equals to something like 0 0.3, 0, 0, 0, 0, a bunch of zeros, and then 4 in the end. And then when you multiply this by 10, you get 3.000 and then 4 in the end. And when you apply ceiling to this uh, number, it rounds up to the 4 and not to the 3 because you have this last uh, decimal here that's 4. If this was 0, then this would not get rounded up to 4, it would just remain 3. So basically never trust the floating numbers to the last digit and never ever compare floating numbers directly for equality. I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can read up more on floating numbers and how to compare them for equality properly. Let me show you what I mean by not comparing flows directly. Let's say you have x equals to 0 0.23 and then y equals to 1 minus 0 0.77. And let's bar dump these out. We see that they're both same, right? It's both of them are equal to 0 0.23. What if we actually compare that? So if we do if x equals y, and don't worry about the if conditional yet, we'll talk about it in a separate video. But if we do this, let's do echo yes, otherwise echo no. You would think that this would print yes, right? Because they're technically same. But if we refresh, we get no. And that's what I mean by you should never uh, compare floats directly like this. Another thing to be aware of is that some operations or calculations might result in an undefined value, which will be represented by a constant called none. 
So if we echo out a constant none, we see the value is none. As you know, NAND stands for not a number. And you can get this value when some operation or calculation cannot be computed and it just results in not a number. So one of those calculations would be log of minus one, and this would result in none. There is also another constant called infinity, which is INF. And if we echo that out, we get this INF. And you get this when uh, you go out of bounds of float. So if you have PHP float max and multiply that by two, then you would get infinity because the number cannot really be represented because this is a maximum floating value that can be stored on the platform. And when you multiply that by two, it's printing as infinity here. So basically any calculation that would push the floating number over the bounds would result in infinity. Also, you should never compare a variable directly to infinity or to NAND to check if the variable is infinity or is NAND. Instead, you should use built-in functions called isNAND and isInfinity. So for example, if we assign this to x, let's delete this from here, and we var dump x, we see that it's still float data type. But this is not really a number, so how would we check if it's an infinity? The function is is infinite and we get boolean true. The opposite of this would be is finite, which basically tells you if the number is not infinite. So in this case, this would be false. But if we set x to something like five, then this would be true. To check if the variable is a not a number, you would use something called is none, and that would return true or false. And in this case, it would return false. Let's do log of minus one, and this should return true now, and it does. And finally, before we wrap this video up, let's talk about casting. So let's say you have an integer like this, and you do var dump x, the data type is int. The way you can convert this to float uh, is by using float cast, and this will just cast that number to float. Another way is by using a function called float val, and that essentially has the same effect, but I personally don't like calling unnecessary functions because there is actually no need to call this function. You could simply just do float like this, which is better in my opinion. Couple of things to keep in mind when converting other data types into floats. When converting a string to a float, if the string can be represented as number, meaning if it's numeric, it will properly be converted to float. Otherwise, Otherwise, it will be converted to zero. So if we set this to something like this, that's not a number, and we convert it to float, we get float data type, but number zero. If we have some number here like this, this will be converted to 15.5. This is it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about strings. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.